You might have been clean for two or three months, but once you have that first drink, it just suckers you back in, and it's the alcohol that controls you, and uh, it's hard to escape it. ended up passing out in a local park uh, where they found me and I was taken home by the police and then I ended up coming through A&E probably about the third or fourth time that I'd been through A&E. This small building in North Manchester is trying to change the way we treat alcohol abuse. Emergency departments around the country spend billions of pounds dealing with the effects of drink and drugs. Inside these doors is an idea that some think could save the NHS money and ultimately save lives. Just taking Derek's bloods, these are going to be sent off to the labs and that's for all blood tests regarding what, it, what damage or has been done to Derek's uh, body why he's been drinking and that's what we'll be doing. When I was 15 I drunk socially and over the past few years it's kind of like I've come out of work it's gradually got to a point where um, it could become dependent, so I couldn't go hours and hours without a drink, so it's a bit scary. Derek, how old do you feel at the moment? Out of ten. About what? About one. Well, to be honest with you, I'm still terrified because I've not been here. I've just been first admission today, so I've never done it before, and so and it's like <clears throat> obviously I've got to go on to further and spend do a lot more further work after this and it's kind of I don't just can't let my family down no matter how bad I feel I just can't do it well to myself or my family so so you've reached what the end of the line you think yeah I mean that's really the doctors have said I mean I've been given that many chances now but I think uh, when I was in the hospital last week I think they were his exact word now you've come to the end of the line but there's no point just giving in without a fight so when you have got sufficient motivation, you can get up when it would have been so much easier just to lie in bed, but you can get up and you can A group counselling session the next What's day. Stopping you doing exactly the same thing, but around Derek was brought here by his family. But others have come straight from 11 A&E departments across Manchester. And if you don't tell anyone and it's like a shock, it's like you've not shared it with anyone, yeah. so you're thrown in the deep end. Yeah. Instead of getting patched up and sent back home, they arrive on what's called the radar wing for a whole week. We were very surprised that a significant proportion, maybe as much as 50% of the patients, had never been seen by alcohol services before. Certain individuals will be presenting to A&E and getting admitted to hospital on a very frequent basis. And one of the common reasons why people may be uh, attending so frequently is alcohol. So somewhere like radar is, a, is a, an avenue where an individual can start to address that underlying problem. I'm just going to go and get this paper next done. But this place is about more than talking therapies, support and counselling. The patients here get the kind of specialist medical care they wouldn't always get in a large hospital. I'm going to give um, one of our patients an IM Pabrinex injection. Um, it's a multivitamin, high potency injection that will help replenish uh, their brain cells and help them uh, recover a lot quicker from their alcohol. Right, ready to go. This absorption is much better. It gets into the bloodstream, it's getting to the brain. Um, you know, pop stars pay for this. This is, uh, this is paid. <laughs> Most of the patients here have severe alcohol problems. So it's a matter of treating the physical addiction and then starting to look at the underlying cause. One of the most dangerous things for somebody who is alcohol dependent is for them to stop drinking suddenly because the biggest thing that will happen is they'll have a seizure and a seizure or a fit um, is, is dangerous, you can die from them. So if you know somebody who's alcohol dependent, it's just saying to them stop drinking actually isn't helpful. 
So what kind of person works in a place like this? Oh, only the best people. Um, <laughs> people who believe that people, when people walk through our door, they've come in because they want to change. A lot of people's attitude, you know, people have done this to themselves. We believe when they walk up to our front door, they walk up because they want to change. Just started five guys, all right? When I was in Germany, the drink was so cheap, it was untrue. You could get a litre bottle of vodka for five, six pounds at a time. And people just drank and drank. Some people managed it, but a lot of people are in the same boat as me. This place is for people like John Courtney, a former RAF man and veteran of the first Gulf War. At his worst, he was drinking a litre of vodka a day. He came here after falling and breaking his back in four places. The seizures could affect me on a daily basis. I could be out in the street, I could be in a restaurant, not drinking, totally sober. Uh, our family's house had three seizures in the same day in my dad's living room. Bashed my face in on the door frame. I ended up in the hospital. And the other thing I have to do is at night time to stop me falling out of bed. I have to turn it into a cot, and it, it, but it, it does stop me falling out of bed. And it's uh, it took me a while to get used to sleeping, basically, as if I was back in a, a cot like an infant. How often were you going into hospital, going into A&E, with, with alcohol conditions? Well, I can't remember the amount of times, but just here is a medical file for the visits I've had to the hospital just in the last year, the different treatments I've had. I mean, uh, electro, well, I can't pronounce it, electrography or something like that, and uh, a surface outreach team, surgical wound infections, it, it, it goes on and on and on. Uh, my broken back, and, and it's just a lot. I can't remember how much help I've had. And a lot of this is when I've been sober. The wards here are split with separate eating and living spaces for both sexes. Four in ten of the places here are taken by women, from teenagers right up to pensioners in their 80s. For many, there's still a stigma. All were happy to talk, but most didn't want to appear on camera. A lot of men drink in the pubs, a lot. Whereas a woman will be with a bottle of wine in the house, you know, and in secret. Mary, not her real name, was one of the first patients on the radar ward. She now volunteers here, helping others. Well, started off a bottle of red wine a night, come three bottles of red wine a night, um, and then I went on to vodka thinking people couldn't smell it on me. And I was doing that when I was working as well. So what about your husband and your family? Were they noticing what was going on? Yeah. My relationship almost split up with my partner. Um, but once you stop drinking, it all comes back together. You know, my partner loves me, I love him. Um, my kids are fantastic. I'm so lucky, I'm one of the lucky ones. This unit has just secured funding to operate for another year, but alcoholics are not a fashionable cause and the future is always uncertain. The people working here say ignoring these patients will simply cost the NHS more in the long run. There will be some people who will think, why are we as a society spending money for people to come in, effectively residential detox, on the taxpayer when we could be spending that money on on neonatal baby units on cancer treatment or, or any of the other priorities the nhs there, has got. there are there are attitudes like that i mean i i personally see that many of the patients that i treat with alcohol problems um you know you you could say it's their fault but in fact 
the circumstances which have led them into alcoholism, as you've seen from some of the cases you've, you've, you've been through, could affect anybody like that. You know, the, 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 the sorts of life, lifestyle choices that people have made are not necessarily just by choice. They are because of circumstances. Many of the patients we see have additional mental health problems, find it difficult to cope with their lives because of that. Obviously, people have chronic pain conditions and maybe start drinking because of those sorts of things. So to just say that anybody who drinks, it's their fault, I think is wrong. It's four days since Derek was admitted to the Chapman Barker unit. He's now getting ready to move into longer term residential rehab, paid for in part by his local council. How do you feel honestly now compared with when you walked in the door? I think you, you asked me, didn't you? Did I say one out of 10? Now, about eight and a half out of 10, I suppose the, the panic's gone away. I feel a lot safer here and I, and I feel a lot safer that my family know I'm here as well because it's not as easy as you think, you know, it's like, it's really, really difficult. But it, there's not really any other options, to be honest with you. How much damage have you been told that, that you've done to your body? Well, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty, pretty severe, to be honest with you. I mean, and I, I know uh, from past I've got severe liver damage, you know. So you can't see a situation where you'd ever pick up a drink again at the moment? I, I, I'm never going to pick up a drink again, but, but can anyone ever say never? I'm always going to be an alcoholic, can I? I despise it, I see it as a poison. Other people have had different opinions on it. Uh, so I see, well, it's, it's poisoned my body, so... so.